What's up, world? And welcome to another session of MC on the Sevens. Before I get started, please click the subscription button and also that notification bell so that whenever I post a video, you will get a notification as soon as it hits the internet. Now I want to talk about this story that came out a few days ago about this Florida teen named Noah Crowley who created this prom proposal poster that said, if I was black, I'd be picking cotton, but I'm white, so I'm picking you for prom. He's standing there smiling, holding a sign. His girlfriend took the picture and she actually put two I heart emojis on the picture and sent it out. And naturally it went viral. Everybody got upset and, and right on cue, this young man apologized saying, that if he offended anyone with the picture, he, he sincerely apologizes and that it wasn't his intention to offend anyone and that if anybody knows him, he doesn't think like that and that it was a joke and it went too far and that he see how he offended people and that he's sorry. But I don't wanna talk about him, I wanna talk about us. Mm, my thing is, I saw this story, the first time I saw this, this heading of this article, I scrolled through it, scroll past it, I mean. The first few times I saw it, I scrolled past it because I say to myself, this is not even worth even clicking on because it's the same old thing. It always is. It's, 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 you know, it's racism. It's not going away. And I felt it was clickbait. Whether the story is true or not, it's still clickbait. And contrary to popular belief that we want to believe, people do these things just for likes, attention, and your reaction. I mean, it's been a long time since I've looked at a lot of articles that's race baiting, as you may call. It's been a long time since I've done it because I used to look at these articles, especially about like Colin Kaepernick and what he did in the NFL. And I go on Yahoo.com and, you know, look on these uh, upstanding real journalism type websites. And then you look at the comments that they allow people to put on there. And they're so evil and vile. It got to a point where I said, you know what, why even look at this stuff? Because if people put a comment up, you respond, and then you're going back and forth. It's making them feel good. It's making them feel good because you responded. It's pissing you off and it's making them happy. And nobody wins. The only person that wins is them because they get what they want out of you. And then you don't get any kind of justice or gratification out of it. Because it's not like you can stop the dude from being racist. You can't stop them from saying what they want to say. You can't put your hands on them. Nothing you can really do. And these guys can talk, 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 talk and frustrate you and get your blood pressure and stuff like that up and you know harm you in, in ways other than what you can do to them but i'm not here to blame him or his girlfriend or anybody else that wants to be a racist i want to blame us for responding to this stuff for every time somebody puts something up like this we want to be the first one to post a comment or post a reply or rebuttal of how upset we are, how offended we are, and people, they ought to be ashamed of themselves. They're not. They're not going to be. So why even raise the issue? But what you have to understand is that once people start getting comfortable with you, that's when the problems arise. Let's go back to when they had prayer in school and I guess it wasn't bothering anybody, but then someone says, oh, we need to take, you know, the Bible and the prayer out. And regardless, and this has nothing to do with the religion you are in, but just go with me. Um, discipline, uh, you know, paddling, <clears throat> sending school, sending Kenneth's kids to, you know, to the principal's office or paddling and things of this nature. Once parents started to say they didn't want their child to pray in school, didn't want their child to be paddled in school, this is when the problems in school really start to arise and all these kids start getting in trouble and feel like you can't touch me, you can't do anything because my mama gonna say, or my daddy gonna say something, you can't touch me. So now you see kids are getting, let's say, it's, this kids are getting worse and worse and this is a small part of, not the whole thing, but just we talking about the school part. Then as years go on, now these same people are saying, man, they should have kept corporal punishment in school or they should have kept prayer in school. Well, it's like, well, it was in there for a reason back in the day and nobody wanted to uh, 
or nobody really saw the ramifications for years on down. See, problems don't start like overnight. It's a trickling effect. This stuff like it's like boiling. It's like cold water on the stove when you just turn it on. It's gonna take a while for it to boil over. But once it boils over, the only thing you can do is throw it out or let it sit there for a long time and let it cool off. Another issue I have is what the old folks used to say, you know, you don't tell the world your family business. Now, in our community, we've had jokes that we would talk about, it, t talk about with each other, pertaining to us or even other people. But when you get outside to other races or other people, you don't say anything. You don't say these same jokes and sayings around them. I mean, for example, we're going to keep it 100. <clears throat> we have always used the N-word to talk amongst each other amongst each other but when you get around other people you would never use that word and when they use it you chastise them or you know you tore them a new one then as years passed on people start feeling comfortable using the word around other people and then that created dialogue of asking why they can't use it and you can use it and stuff like that but you still allow it to get out now you look at a good example is you go to a lot of these hip hop concerts, the majority of the people are white and they're reciting every lyric to the same albums you listen to using the same words that you use and listen to all the time. It's the same thing. So now they're comfortable. Now they're comfortable, they're getting comfortable around you. It's like, I can't call you the N word, but I can rap and use the N word in context. So now you are uh, starting to accept me more as one of you. So now I can use it. So now the next thing is to be able to tell jokes like y'all tell jokes, but I can put it out there. And it shouldn't be a problem because y'all do it. So why we can't do it? So this is why the older people who say that word is vile and we shouldn't use it like we do. And it should be banned and all that kind of stuff. And it should be, you know, some kind of laws against it. Everybody else look at it like that's crazy. But really, now that you look at it, they... These, these older, the older generations <clears throat> were on to something. No, he didn't call anybody the N-word in his, on his poster. But again, it's about being comfortable enough to do something like this and to think that everybody would think it would be okay. And if not, then I'll just send out a, an apology. And that should make everything okay because they won't do anything anyway. If they can't get the joke, I apologize. But I say all that just to come back to this stop responding to this stuff stop clicking on these articles this stuff is put out there yes racism exists but i believe a lot of this stuff is planted to just get people to keep people's i don't know just to get you riled up to keep you upset to keep your mind focused on some bs instead of focusing on other things that you can really that you could be really Focusing your mind on like education, business building, wealth building, things like that, uh, building families, strengthening families, strengthening neighborhoods, communities and stuff like that. Oh, you know, we'll put something out like this and it'll keep, you know, what I'm saying the, the, the pot stirred when actually I, this is not to me personally. This is not even this is not even worth my time. I only made this video because I'm going to talk to us about not responding to this mess but that's that's what i think stop responding to this stuff just keep it moving find more positive things to talk about to read about to discuss amongst your people things that can, you know better things that can build positive images and you know build positive communities not this kind of mess here you respond <clears throat> they respond you respond they laughing at you you mad at them they getting a the kick out of it. They go to sleep happy with a smile on their face and you going to bed with a frown on your face. Can't believe that people are this racist when, man, that stuff is not going in the world. Let's just keep it, let's just keep it a buck fifty, as they say. Because the truth be told, the guy who put this up probably wouldn't say this to your face or probably wouldn't make this poster and put it up in the black community, at a black community school. And let's just be honest, the majority of the people that's responding to this, that they hate it, probably wouldn't say nothing to this guy if they saw him in the streets in a way. So let's just all just do, do the best thing 
ignore this and focus on something more positive. And on that note, I'm going to end this video by saying always subscribe, like, share my videos. Um, always leave a comment, whether it's good or bad. And until next time, peace.